Oh, still recording. Oh, wait, started recording. <clears throat> Hello, uh, here we have a uh, rack mounted amplifier that's had a bit of a, a rough life. I mean, you can see the angle of the volume control there on the left, and the one on the right is not looking super straight either. This is a XLS602 crown model. Um, apparently it was being mounted somewhere and uh, whoever mounted it wasn't paying attention when they were told not to do the following and they did the following and it appears some screws have been uh, forced up into the unit in a couple of places um, so that appears to have caused some damage and we're going to find out what that damage is screws around the edge and the back removed this top should come off and from what I've seen through the air vents it looks horrendously dirty inside oh dear me <laughs> you could you could carpet a house with what's in there that is awfully fluffy <laughs> start by vacuuming this out <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah look at that <laughs> oh that is fantastic <laughs> fantastic <laughs> I didn't mean to do that <laughs> well that's not half bad you can actually see the you can actually see the PCB there now <laughs> These poor caps that were completely buried under fluff, definitely bulging. Um, you can feel the bulge in the top of those. Um, that's a bit cleaner down through there. But uh, what's going on under here? This looks like a bit of cardboard used to direct airflow, but surely it wouldn't just be hanging down on top of those, would it? Oh, 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 those poor output transistors. Gosh, they must have been cooking. I wonder if they're still alright. <laughs> it's amazing how much this kit like this can, can carry on and, you know, keep on trucking through all the hard times. <laughs> uh, this bit of paper is hot snotted down to in the bottom corners, but... Um, well, that took entirely too long, but it's definitely in a much better condition uh, to be working on. Now, the one biggest fear I have at the moment is that the screw they punched up through the bottom has gone into the transformer. And I'm having a quick look around the corner. It looks like that could be the issue. So there's the other issue of the other hole, which I think is over here somewhere coming straight up into the PCB. So let's have a look and try and gauge where that's come into. So we have one hole down the bottom here. And that's going to be... Ooh, I think that actually missed everything, that one. Let me just have a feel under there for the hole again. Ah, yeah, there it is. Okay. So, ah, okay. The hole that may not be a problem has come up right, right here. Literally right under this, this zip tie down here. There's the hole on the very edge of the PCB. And if it did anything... It may have pushed these wires out the way as it came up. Just trying to feel for any damage to the wires. And I don't feel any, so... Yeah, I can feel the edge of the PCB there. So I think that hole there has had no effect on what's going on. Now the other hole that I'm worried about is right there. And if you can't see it, I'll point it out. So right right there it's straight up into the bottom of the transformer so let's get this transformer demounted and we can flip it over and see if it has actually caused any damage let's see if this nut will turn or if it'll just rotate the bottom 
stud or if this bottom end's keyed into the chassis. Oh, no, it looks like the bottom's keyed in, so it's not rotating the stud. That's good. It's not overly tight. We have that. We have a washer. Now, where are the windings coming out? Because that's going to get in my way. We should be able to flip it as it sits. I might have to unhook that. Let's uh, uh, let's unplug that. Let's unzip. <laughs> Got a zip tie around the cable on the secondary. So let's just get rid of that. And let's put another one there. And we can unplug the secondary, which is just down in there. And that will give us some slack to pick this out. Rotate it to get this out from under the edge of the chassis and we should be able to lift the whole thing. Okay, I may have to wind the bolt out from the underneath. Oh, yeah. If I turn the bolt, it will unscrew from the center of the transformer. And it just falls out. Let's flip it over. Oh, duh. <laughs> Feels like a ton of lead. <laughs> oh dear. It is exactly what I thought it would be. Wap 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 wow. Yeah, it's completely obliterated one of the windings. It would have earthed it out. <laughs> this transformer is not fixable. At least well, any of the technology I've got. Sure, you could rewind it, but yeah, not something I'm going to be doing. Oh, it's probably written off this entire amplifier, actually, because the cost of the transformer alone, I imagine, wouldn't be very cheap. All right, so I actually found a schematic. I guess it's old enough for them to exist. <laughs> and we have a secondary voltage of um, up to 65 volts AC with another secondary voltage of 18 volts and that's all of the the secondaries on there by the look of it if we look in here this is element 14 so i've been going by uh, i chose a secondary voltage of 18 and uh, 55 is the highest that they do 230 volts in um, and then we've got some other things we can do like the height of it so i've just measured that at or 71 and there's only one option so let's see what pops up and this great big toroidal here uh, overall diameter of 139 but let's just have a quick look at roughly how big this one is and I get it to about 144 so it's a little bit smaller but pretty close uh, it is rated at 625 VA and it says there secondary current about just under 6 amps nominal. I don't know if that would be enough. Um, anyway, if it was going to be enough, they want, well, it'll cost me uh, 170 odd Kiwi dollars. And I don't know that this thing's worth it, especially with the damage to the controls on the front. So we've still got this junk to contend with. Uh, it's going to need capacitors because they are a bit bulged. Of course I have to yet determine if it needs um, output transistors. Uh, hopefully they're okay. It will need at least one more fan. That seems to be spinning freely. Lord knows how, it's not all dried up and seized and horrible and falling off like this one. So that's what we're looking at. I think this is probably a write-off. I'll give the estimate to the owner. They can decide. But uh, given the age of it, you could probably pick up one in working condition for... Um, I mean, if you picked one up for a couple hundred dollars, there you go. And it'll probably be a bit newer as well. Well, I hope you like a look at what stupidity can do. Thanks all for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.